All right, everybody, welcome. I am using my iPhone here to record as opposed to my camcorder because I decided that when it comes time to start showing CRTs, because my camcorder is so cheap and doesn't lock onto the refresh rate, it's a bit annoying. So I thought, well, I'll use the iPhone from now on so the image is a little bit better and doesn't induce motion sickness <laughs> any more than my regular shaky handheld cam does. So anyway, what we have here, follow along with me on this mad scientist experiment, if you will. I have a medium res Cruising USA board, and as you can see, it is operating and running and looking and working fantastic. But what is interesting is that not only is it running and looking and working fantastic, but this is a standard res G07. Now, how in the world am I running a medium res signal and have it look and work this great on a standard res monitor, well, here's the solution. A yesterday, no, this morning, this morning, a fellow arcade enthusiast on the Facebook pages had posted about how he has a super sprint that he put a G07 into and he couldn't get it to sync. It had a um, repeating image that was indicative of the wrong resolution of monitor being used in a medium res game. So yeah, he's using a standard res monitor in a medium res game and it, it will never work. So we told him, hey, you got bad news. You can't run a G07 on a medium res monitor, a medium res machine because it won't work. But I also told him that, hey, I know of a solution that I have done in the past that worked without issue, and I'll post it here shortly. So I'm doing the video here to pass this information along to everybody who might need this information. So if you have a NARC or Paperboy or APB or Super Sprint, and I'm probably forgetting a couple of others, 19-inch medium res games, and the monitors you have in there is either, well, completely missing or destroyed or necked, or you can't fix it, or whatever the problem is, but you do have some standard res monitors at your disposal, standard res that you want to put in there. It works and looks great by use of these two converters. So how is this working? Well, the video signal from the 25 kilohertz output of the Cruising USA board is running directly into this converter. Now, we all are familiar with this one. This is the CGA slash EGA slash component slash VGA pass-through converter, and this is getting direct 25 kilohertz medium res into the input here, and it's converting it to VGA output, which is then running to another converter, which is VGA input, and it's converting to CGA standard res output. So medium res in, VGA out, VGA in converts to 15 kilohertz standard res, standard res out to the G07. And it works and looks great. No detriment, no input lag, no frame drop. Well, there is frame, there's about four frames. So this one is documented at one to two frame drop. We can assume this one's probably the same. So you're talking four frame drop. When you're playing games like NARC or Super Sprint or Paperboy or APB, where you're not trying to, uh, you know, shoot a projectile at a specific instant or jump off a cliff at the very edge of the cliff to make another cliff, when you're not dealing with platform shooting, jumping games where timing is, is critical, a Ford frame drop is completely negligible when it comes to something like this. So you're not going to have any problem with anything like that. It really works fantastic. I've done this in the past and you would never, if you put, you walk up to Paperboy or Super Sprint or whatever and you have a set, set up like this, I don't think anybody would even really notice unless they're really super hardcore or something. But you know, this will allow you to use a standard res monitor and keep the machine somewhat original without having to LCD it. So if your monitor is completely missing or you don't know how to fix it or you can't fix it or you don't know what it is or it's damaged or whatever the situation is, but you do have a working standard res, this will allow you to get your machine up and going and, you know, I don't want to say fool everybody, but at least have an original functional CRT in your machine to keep from having to LCD it. And I already have a tutorial, a complete total tutorial on this converter already. And I'll link that down in the description below. You can check that out. That shows you how to set up your clamp settings, your uh, vertical position to keep the image from freezing, 
uh, how to set up your correct RGB and which sync wire to use, the whole nine yards. It's all in the video down in the description. But there are a couple caveats on this particular setup is that when I first, this is a brand new converter. I just took it out of the wrapping for this video. When I hooked it up and turned it on, I had an image that was bouncing. The image was bouncing up and down like this. And I mentioned in the tutorial video down below that you have to put a nine, I'm sorry, 8K to 10K ohm resistor in series with the sync wire. And that is mostly for the older midway games, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Spy Hunter. Some of the older midway games will jump around and you got to put that resistor in line with the sync wire. But Cruise in the USA is new enough to where you don't actually have to do that. If you have that problem on a newer game like this where it's bouncing up and down, all you have to do is just hit the auto button. There is an auto button right there, A-U-T-O, click, and that will zoop, sync this right up. So after this was bouncing around, I hit the auto button. It synced right up just as you see it right now, no problem. So that's one caveat. The second one with this one that I don't mention, I don't, I don't think in the description video or the tutorial, is that when you are running two converters like this, you're adding extra resistance on the RGB wires. So that brings the signal down. So to counteract that, you have to turn up the RGB pots on your neck board or just crank these up to maximum. So these pots are about 50 to 60% set to that, you know, halfway or a little bit more from the factory. So when you're adding the extra resistance on the wires, just crank these to 100%, done. So if you ever have to do this setup, just follow the complete instructions on clamp settings and connections and everything in the tutorial video down below. And also crank these to 100% and only have to hit the auto button if you have a, a shaky image. But that's really all there is to this one. And of course you have to combine your power connection. The other one is, you can't see it, but it's right there. So power and power are combined into a couple of, uh, well, I don't want to, I got the, the actual uh, voltage connection uh, spliced together, soldered together with the lines here that run up to my five volt. Uh, power and ground on the power supply, but it's hiding under here for the voltage so they don't short out. But you got to combine your powers or however you want to do it, but it's five volts for this converter and five volts for this converter. And now going over this one, uh, there's one thing to denote differences between this. So this one will remember all your settings. So if you go in the menu and set all your settings and proper adjustments and everything and power cycle this, it will remember. You turn it on, play the game, turn it off, come back a month later, it will remember all your settings. This one doesn't remember jack shit. <laughs> you can go in here and spend half an hour setting all this up. You turn it off back on, it forgets everything. So this doesn't have any memory. So you don't actually have to adjust anything with this one, nothing. There's one switch here that, has, that says size. You'll notice here that I have a full screen, but if I flip this switch to the off position, it shrinks the image. Back to on, increases, off, decreases. Well, let's get back to the main screen here. You can see that the image here, once it gets back to the race, and how it's small, how it's the black area. If I flip the switch back to on, bloop, now it's full screen again. So all I, all I would recommend is leaving this switch in the on position. Uh, you'll notice here that if I flip this to off and back to the on position, now it's in the on position, but it's still small. You have to cycle it back off and on again for it to stay this way. So you just flip the switch to on and then power it up and it'll default to full screen. If it doesn't, flip the switch back a couple, a couple times. But it needs to be in the on position and stay in the on position for it to remain the full screen like this. But that's the only thing you have to do for this for the settings. But yeah, you can see I have the RGB going into this, output, input. Uh, the Well, this is the medium res again, medium res VGA to uh, standard res CGA out to the monitor. And if, once you get that switch in the on position and set this up for the, per the tutorial video down below, power it up, uh, put your two power wires together, two ground wires together, run it to your five volt and you're all set. You'll have to go through here, set your you know screen size, position, shape and everything for the resolution of whatever game you want to run. But once you do, we can turn this off and back on. And it will, should remember everything that we had. It should go right back to what it was. There you go. And I didn't do any adjustments here, so it's a little bit too wide right now. But, I mean, you know, the, having this switch in the on position will prevent you from having to max out your width 
or max out your vertical size. If you if you have that switch in the on position and it's still too tall or too wide, then you can just you know flip it back to the off position and try and work around it. But I just use always just keep it in the on position. But yeah, right back to where we were, no problem. So there's the solution. Um, not much else to describe. If you're in a situation where you have a medium res game and you don't, this of course will also will work for 25 inch, 27 inch. If you have a Cruising USA and your 25 inch medium res is destroyed and you have a 25 inch K7000 or something, uh, you'll need to install an isolation transformer because I'm pretty sure those games don't have the uh, ISO in there. But you want to use a K7000, you got a 25 inch K7000 laying around, you want to use that. Same setup, works the same way. So across the board. So if you have a medium res game and all you have is a 25, I'm sorry, <laughs> and all you have is a 25 kilohertz um, medium res, I'm sorry, no. You have a medium res game with a 25 inch, I did it again, 25 kilohertz signal. Man, I am, I screwed that all up. And you don't have a proper monitor to put in there and you want to use a standard res because you have a 25 inch standard res laying around or 27 inch standard res laying around uh, and you want to put that in there, you can do this setup. Good to go. 19 inch, 25, 27, doesn't matter. So, yep, I'm going to put that out there. Hopefully it makes sense. I'll put a link down below for where to purchase both of these if you want to pick this up and do this for yourself. If you're ever in the situation where you need to do this, and yeah, check out the tutorial video on that if you haven't seen it. Otherwise, yeah, I appreciate you watching. If you have questions, comments, put them down below. I'll do my best to answer them in a timely manner. And I appreciate you watching as always, and we'll thank you very much. Nope, we will. We, I thank you very much, and we will see you next time. <laughs> I am not doing good today, but you can forgive me. Anyway, there you go. Thanks again.